plus students, here's a little guide to help you with your compare and contrast essay. I've added some of these documents into the folder. So you will just go here to content, go to compare and contrast, and here's everything that you need. Here's the essay prompt, which you received in class last Monday. Here is a guide to help you uh, embed textual evidence. Here's an outline, and here's how to create a works cited page. This is a video. It will walk you through the process. Um, let's look at the outline real quick. You also received a smaller version of this on the actual essay prompt. I just want to go over it with you one more time before you start working on the essay. I put three different topics on here to try to help you out. Um, this is just the basic structure right here. There's two ways to do it, compare and contrast, like we talked about. You can do it subject by subject, and this is like a really brief outline where you would have your introduction, your hook, background, and claim. And then you would talk about one subject and list three qualities, and then you would talk about a second subject and discuss those same three qualities. Over here, I did two examples. One is, let's say I wanted to compare millennials to Generation X. I would have one paragraph about millennials, and I would talk, I could talk about their work ethic, their po political views, in their relationships, or even social media, internet. I would just try to find three topics that overlap between the two big subjects. What are some characteristics, qualities, skills, etc., that I could compare and contrast between millennials and Gen X? And so these are just three ideas. Um, you don't have to use this topic at all. And then my second paragraph would be about Gen X, but see, I talk about the exact same topics, work ethic, politics, relationships. Okay, here's another one I did. If I'm comparing uh, two presidents and their speeches after tragedy, so I have one where I would compare George Bush's speech after 9-11 to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Delano Roosevelt's speech after Pearl Harbor. I would have to read both speeches and see what the two presidents have in common. You know, like their two purposes or three purposes, their goals from the speech. What are they trying to accomplish with the two speeches? And then again, I set it up like this. One body paragraph would be about Bush, how he tries to ease the fears he tries to create unity, and he ensures the American people that there will be justice. And Roosevelt does the exact same thing in his speech. And so that's what I would do for that essay. Now, if you're going to compare uh, two children's books, like one a modern children's book to a children's book from the 50s, then you would compare some of the elements it could be like short story elements or writing elements. So you could compare characters. You could compare illustrations. You could compare uh, like um, the words, the number of words on a page, the language that is used on a page from the 1950s is prob probably more formal. And today's uh, children's book, the language is probably more informal or colloquial. It's just written the way normal people talk. And so those would be some of the elements that you could compare. Okay, again, you could also compare conflict or plot or anything like that, but just find three common elements to compare and contrast. Okay, now the other way to organize and compare and contrast is point by point comparison. You would use the same points it would just go back and forth between the two uh, sources. So, for example, here's one that I did with the same subject, Millennials versus Gen X. But now, instead, I'm going to have one whole paragraph about work ethic, and I'm going to talk about how the Millennials view work versus how Gen X views work. And then I would have a second paragraph about politics. The millennials' views on politics versus Gen X's views on politics, and the third again on relationships. 
how millennials view relationships, maybe even narrow it down to marriage or friendship, something like that, versus how Gen X views the same thing, relationships. And this is my example with the two presidential speeches. I have how uh, both presidents talk about trying to ease the fears of Americans, try to calm them. So I would have an example from uh, Bush's speech and an example from Roosevelt's. When they both try to create unity, I would do the same. How does Bush create unity? How does Roosevelt create unity? What specifically do they say? And then for this one, same thing, justice. What are they going to do now after the attacks? What are their plans? And I would compare the two plans. Okay. This is just how to organize your essay, and I hope it helps. Also, I want you to look real quickly in the folder for um, how to embed evidence. Because you have sources, you are going to embed evidence, and you're going to create a works cited page. So this uh, handout right here tells us how to do that. For evidence, you need to sandwich your evidence. You can't just pop a quote down in the middle of the page. This is very similar to what you've been doing with reading responses. So if you look over the, those notes, it has the same information. But here I've simplified it a bit. You're going to create a quotation sandwich or paraphrase sandwich. And it has to have four elements right here. You have to have a transition. You have a lead-in where you name the source and describe the situation, and then you have your quoted text, and then you talk about what it means and why it matters. That's key. What does the source mean, and why does it matter to your argument? How does it support your view on how millennials view politics? Connect it back to the topic every time. And I did, here's, I all the examples of transitions that you can use, okay. Um, you are writing a compare and contrast, so these would be good transitions right here, comparing transitions, contrasting transitions. Emphasis is always good when you're trying to wrap up the paragraph at the end, okay. Here are some lead-in verbs that you can use to help you write your lead-in, and I did one example for you. This is from George Bush's speech from his 9-11 address to the nation. I've copied my quote right here. This is directly from his speech. He says in his speech, this is a day when all Americans from every walk of life unite in a resolve for justice and peace. Okay, now on the right hand side is how it should look in your essay. It should be embedded. And so I have all four elements. I have the transition, I have the lead-in, I have the text, and I have the means and the matters, which are two additional sentences after the piece of evidence. So look at my example. I've taken this quote and turned it into a sandwich. For instance, at the very end of his speech, Bush describes this tragedy as a time, open quote, when all Americans from every walk of life unite, end quote, in order to find justice and peace. And see, I embedded that as well. And then I have his name in parenthetical citation right before the period. By doing this, Bush understands that during calamity, especially one as devastating as 9-11, it is human nature to search for support. When people face hardship, they reach out to others. So the president encourages unity as the first step to recovery. And so I have my quote, I explain what it means, and I explain why it matters, which is connecting it back to my topic, which is unity, trying to unite the nation. Okay, you will do that again with the other source. So I would say, if I'm comparing, which I'm doing, because they have very similar views, presidents, when they address nation after tragedy. So I would say at the same time, when uh, Roosevelt delivers his speech after the attack on Pearl Harbor, he mentions, quote, okay? And then my very ending sentence would use one of these. Indeed. Both presidents are trying to take a nation and bring them all together for a common purpose, okay? 
So that's how you embed your text evidence. If you have any questions, just let me know, and I hope this helps.